today we have a circle of ten. Hi. <laughs> well done, and congratulations on your achievement. What are your names, and what number rank are, were you? Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Alicia Hossein. I'm currently ranked number three. My name is Nicholas Smaraj, and I'm number four. My name is Karen Metri, I'm number five. My name is Christian Damon, and I'm number six. All right. <clears throat> What was your biggest challenge during high school and how did you overcome it? Um, so I definitely think um, throughout the four years of high school, um, it's very easy to just sort of get swept up and like, you know, we have a huge bridge. So physically that's an element, but then also just in this wave of classes and clubs and I guess the monotony of our daily routine. So I think probably one of my biggest challenges was learning how to advocate for myself to decide which friendships, you know, aren't serving me, which classes, you know, I probably should or shouldn't be taking, uh, which clubs I maybe need to balance my time in. Um, so I think learning how to do that um, probably took the most effort um, throughout these last four years. That's a lot of multitasking, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say doing, doing student government this year was definitely the hardest challenge I've had to overcome. We've had a lot of friction on the board, but I'm really proud of the work that we all did because I know that now um, I'm a lot more of a confrontational person than I was before, so definitely um, do, being, doing student government this year was a challenge. Hmm. Um, I think my biggest challenge was probably taking my time and just enjoying the four years, and I was, felt like kind of in a rush to decide my future, and I realized I had a lot, a lot of time to do that especially senior year, I kind of rushed a little bit more than I should have. Uh, I think for me, my biggest challenge was probably COVID-19. Uh, I got COVID-19 last year in around May, and uh, I missed a lot of, I missed all the honor societies, I missed a lot. It had a big physical impact on me, but I feel like I was able to push through it and come back this year, bring my grades up, and here I am today. Thank you. I have another thing for you. What extracurricular activities were you involved in during high school, and how did, you, did they shape your experience? Uh, I, uh, this year, uh, I was in business club, uh, physics Olympics. Uh, I think that's it this year. Last year I was in physics Olympics. Uh, we actually won first place in the state. Uh, shout out to Ms. Patel. <laughs> uh, we got, and then for business club this year, I made it to nationals in Georgia. Uh, I just want to thank like my teacher, Ms. Halsey, Ms. Schaefer, Ms. Pike. Uh, it really did shape me into a better person because I was able. I mean, to be honest, it, it was hard because you have to test in front of a lot of people, a lot of judges. We went to Atlantic City, and uh, it brought more confidence and in myself as who I am, and who I am as a person. Um, I was involved in quite a few clubs, but it really did help me figure out what I wanted to do in life. And throughout the years, I kind of started with a lot. And by senior year, I kind of narrowed it down to what really mattered to me. And the most important ones to me were Interact Club because it was a community service-based club. So it taught me a lot about helping others and what you can do for your community, as well as Coptic Society because that is a group. We have a lot of Coptic people in our school and it was nice being around other people who share the same beliefs and we could all learn together. And we all had a fun time during that club. Um, Ami and Alicia are actually both the, uh, Alicia is the editor-in-chief for the Beacon and I'm the assistant editor and we've had so much fun this year running the Beacon for two years. We do had like, we've done at least seven editions so far, the two of us. Um, so definitely I have a large role in the Beacon and I'm also, I have a big role in the Latin Club at Bound High School. I'm currently the president and I'm the historian for the state organization for Latin. So those two clubs have definitely had the largest impact on me and helping me, you know, pursue communications and college. Yeah. And then um, apart from Beacon, I'm also president of student government um, and I participate in our model UN team. Um, Nicholas is also part of that and we you know, have had so many experience, um, great experiences. We traveled to New York City, we traveled to DC, we did a conference at Rutgers um, and Ms. Toomey and Dr. Bransfield, Mr. McCafferty and Ms. Nowak and all the um, teachers in the social studies department involved in that program, um, they're all so amazing and it, it really allows students to become more passionate about global issues um, and bring awareness to a lot of things. So it, it's, it's a lot of fun to be a part of that. Would you consider yourselves the best partners 
Yes, yes we do. We, we do everything together. We, we are do. the duo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What advice would you give to incoming high school freshmen? <laughs> oh, maybe like um, you can go. I mean, uh, I would say don't let anyone ruin your confidence. Like you yeah. know yourself, you know your worth, and don't let anyone bring that down. That's something I think all four of us can say that it's happened to us. I mean, there's always going to be someone who's going to want to take you down and convince you that you're not smart or you're not good enough, but that's just not true. So just remember to stay true to yourself and just know your worth. Yeah. And uh, to uh, refer to what Nick is saying. If somebody is like saying that you're not good enough or whatever they want to say, just block it all out in whatever way you can. Focus on your goals. If your goal is to be in the circle of 10, if your goal is to be a D1 athlete, whatever it is, you can do it. Just focus on it, lock in, just block out everyone else. Yeah. Gotta conserve positivity. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think there's like no amount of advice you could give to an incoming freshman to prepare them, but I think one of the best things to tell them is, um, you know, Take it serious, but not too serious. You know, work yeah. hard and focus on what you want, but make sure to take care of yourself. You know, enjoy having joy time with your friends because you're not going to be able to do a lot of these things maybe when you're older. So, you know, enjoy it now while you're young. I mean, I would honestly say, like, um, I don't know if there are any Taylor Swift fans here <laughs> or <laughs> watching. She has a song called Mastermind, and in it she's, um, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So I would, to me, I would say sometimes it's better to play the long game than it is to, I guess, reach for that short-term satisfaction. So maybe, you know, you won't get the last word in a fight with your friend, or maybe, you know, you won't be um, the first one in your friend's social media post or whatever the situation is. Um, maybe work, working towards something bigger, I think, it always has a little more purpose than, I guess, reaching for the low-hanging fruit. So. Mm. Who has been your biggest inspiration throughout high school, and why? Uh, gotta be my dad. Uh, uh, came from Egypt, does, works multiple jobs, tries to provide for the family, and he gave me this opportunity, and I can't let him down. So everything I do, I'm doing for him, and my mom, of course, my brother. Uh, but if it's one person then that's my biggest impact, it's gotta be him. Though his worth work ethic is way better than mine, so <laughs> try. Oh, that's a father figure right there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think similar to Chris's, um, my parents are probably my biggest inspiration. They have a similar story where they both came to America to give me a better life. So I feel like it's up to me now to you know do something while I'm here and try my best and kind of be successful in whatever way I decide to be. So they're definitely my biggest inspiration. Yeah, um, I mean, honestly, the same thing. My parents are truly my best friends. Um, my mom, I think there's always this misconception that you, you should never care too much about things. And, you know, sometimes it's easier to be blase. Um, but I think what it, like my parents are such an inspiration because they show the importance of caring about the people in your lives, about the work that you do, um, about the life that you're living. Um, and so I think everything I do is to make them proud and you know to make all of this worth it so I would say similar to everyone like my whole family I would say is definitely is so inspirational to me I think every person in my family have, has played such an important and different role in who I am today and my success like my mom has like taught me how to work hard and my brother really was able to teach me like had to be a good student and to work towards these larger goals that Alicia has talked about and just everyone from my extended family to my immediate family that has played such an important role in who I am today. Hmm. What's your favorite memory from the high school? That's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so many good ones. I would probably say um, when I would say, I don't know if this is the same for Nicholas, but when we did our first edition of The Beacon, um, it was really, really hard to start from scratch um, and really find our own voice within the paper and the direction that we wanted to take it. Um, and we just, we had such an incredible support system from Mr. Lombari and um, administrators here and all the teachers. Um, so it was a really fulfilling experience in that when it was finally printed, I could sit there and I could say, you know, I had, a, I played a role and I, I played a big part in making this happen. So I think it just, the f how fulfilling that was was a great memory. I definitely agree with Alicia. Like doing the beacon, 
was so much fun and every single audition that we did was so much thought and care. Um, but I would say like my favorite memory was definitely with Alicia as well, um, getting accepted and attending oh, yeah. the New Jersey that Scholars Program. It was a five week program and the two of us both were accepted from Bayonne High School and it was so much fun. It was I'm so grateful to both Mr. Lombardi and Mr. Murphy who nominated us and we were accepted and it was just such a great time and I learned like how to live on my own and like how to learn for fun and not just to learn to, you know, be a good student or have good grades. So definitely doing the program was my favorite part of high school. Um, I feel like there's a lot of memories, I've, every football game, every club, all the classes that I shared with my friends, those are all great, but I think my favorite would probably have to be the first day of high school, just because oh. it was so exciting coming in as a freshman and meeting up with your friends, walking in together, and it was scary and nerve-wracking, but it was probably one of the most enjoyable days. Mm -hmm. uh, so for cute. me, it's got to be when my counselor gave me my transcript. Because oh. <laughs> me and Mr. Wilson have a love-hate relationship. Oh. <laughs> so when he gave me my transcript, he had it flipped over. And the pro weeks before, I keep asking him, when are we going to know? When are we going to know? And he wouldn't want to tell me. So when he finally gave it to me, flipped over, he told me congratulations. And I looked at it, and my heart dropped because I couldn't believe it. And that memory, I'll never forget that memory. So shout out, Mr. Wilson. Oh. <laughs> All right. What was the biggest lesson you learned in high school? Take it seriously. That's, I mean, yeah. take, it, but take it seriously to the point where you don't ruin your social life. Mm -hmm. So yes, taking AP classes help you. Taking honors classes help you. Yes, being in the circle of ten is, is great. But if it, if you let it impact all your friendships and all the fun that you could possibly have in high school, you're gonna regret it no matter what. And thankfully, I had a good friend group that made sure that I didn't do that and didn't focus only on my studies uh, but thank God I was able to take it seriously succeed and have fun so I was actually gonna not to be contrarian but I was gonna say that <laughs> nothing is ever as serious <laughs> as you think it is <laughs> that was my answer is gonna be because it's like when I go through high school and I had all of these like like these challenges that I had and all these teachers that I didn't like or didn't like me and all these things and I was like, all these grades that I wasn't happy with, like nothing was ever as serious as it was in the moment. And I look back now and it's like, you know, like you're always gonna be successful at the end of the day. So it's like all these little hurdles that you had to overcome, like nothing is as serious as you think it's gonna be. But like, I definitely agree with Christian, like take all of your goals very seriously and like be a hard worker and have a good work ethic. Yeah. Um, the biggest lesson I learned would have to be to go for what you want. Don't think um, only this amount of people get accepted into this program, only this amount of athletes, you know, go professional. Only th if you want it, then there's no reason that you shouldn't be part of that small percent that makes it. So definitely go for what you want and try because it's always worth trying. Even if you don't make it to exactly where you want to be, you'll find out what you like and dislike and you'll make it somewhere that you like. Yeah, I think for me, as um, uh, cliche as it sounds, um, really the biggest lesson I learned was how to be kind to not just others, but myself. We have a really, really big school, so you're gonna meet a lot of different people, not all of which are going to be welcoming or nice or um, kind. So I think building up not just a thick skin, but also harboring a sensitivity um, towards you know the experiences of others and um, the, ex the experience that you're having right now. I mean, high school is a hard time for everyone. Um, and we can all, you know, we can all be a little kinder to ourselves, um, especially in the moment, so. That's high school in a nutshell for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being <laughs> What accomplishment are you most proud of from your time in high school? Oh, wow. I don't um, know. I know. This one's a hard one. I think, you know, it's not an academic accomplishment. It's not something that could be measured, but I think staying close to my friends and true to who I am and kind of keeping the mm -hmm. same friend group and you know not letting high school kind of change me and for the worse because it's very easy to get caught up in everything and just become someone who you never expected yourself to be yeah. so I feel like I'm very proud with how things turned out and who I've become oh I would say um, my biggest accomplishment is probably um, so when I was in I think sixth grade I came with my sister who went to Bayonne High School to a college fair that they had up um, and Brown University had a table at the college fair and I remember it was the, the college admissions counselor um, gave me 
um, one of the stickers that they had at the table. And I, you know, from that point on, the only college that when people asked me, you know, in sixth grade where I wanted to go, that was the college that I answered with. Um, and so I think my biggest accomplishment is it's been a very long and difficult year for a number of reasons. Um, and I think staying true to the goal that I knew that I always wanted to achieve um, and making it into Brown University is probably um, one of my biggest accomplishments because um, I guess when, you, when you're in high school, there's a lot of voices that are gonna be telling you that you know, you're not good enough or that you're not gonna be able to achieve what you want. Um, so I think listening to that little voice in my head, the little girl who said, you know what, maybe Brown University is the place for you. I think that's probably what I'm proudest of. Yeah. Oh, am I the only one? Oh, okay. Oh, after? Um, I definitely would say going to the New Jersey Scholars Program, but I already talked about that. So, like, definitely my biggest accomplishment would, you know, I got into UPenn and that was my dream school for a while. But also just, like, um, being, I know in high school that I grew a lot as a person, and that's what I'm definitely most, um, ex like, most proud of. Like, I know that the, fr the freshman version of me would look at me today and be so proud of who I am now. Like I used, to, I was a freshman, and I used to be so timid and like shy, and like now I'm a lot more outgoing, and I know how to stand up for myself. So I would say just like I know it's a little cliche, but just I'm really happy of the person that I am today and a lot of the growth that I had. Um, and I would say that's what I'm definitely my biggest accomplishment. Uh, for me, I think it's finally creating a plan for myself and for the future. Uh, up until I don't know a couple months ago, I didn't know what I was going to do with with for myself. Uh, with the help of other people, of course, uh, I was able to finally set a plan and stick to it. That's something that I wasn't able to do. I used to just play around and say, oh, I'm going to do this, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, uh, I'm just going to look for the most money. I just need money, whatever. <laughs> now, now I'm actually able to look at something, say, I like this, I'm going to do it, and it's going to work out, and I'm confident in it. So I'd say that's my biggest accomplishment. Mm -hmm. What teacher had the biggest impact on, your, on you during high school, and why? Um, I would have to say, um, apart from my mom, <laughs> I miss out, <laughs> um, is Mr. Lombari, um, and pretty much um, all of the English department at Bowen High School, but Mr. Lombari in particular, um, he was my junior year English teacher, and he's the advisor of the Beacon. Um, I really just think he um, emboldened me to become, you know, to trust in my writing and trust in my creativity. Um, and I think he sort of handed the torch for me to say, you know, I, I write and I read because I love it and I know that um, I'll be able to make a change one day through it. So, Mr. Lombari, take his English class if you can, he's the best. <laughs> um, I would say Mr. Murphy, he was my history teacher last year and he's currently my economics teacher. And taking economics this year definitely was like bold of me. I, I do not like math, I don't like anything economics related. But I took the class anyways because Mr. Murphy told me that I should and I'm really happy that I did because economics is a lot more fun than I ever imagined it to be um, and he was the one who made it a lot more enjoyable. And also like, um, you know, people might know him better as Diamond Jim because of the school <laughs> newspaper. Yes. And I remember when I, it was our first edition of the Beacon and Alicia had asked me to do like the Human to Beach section. And I was a little bit scared, like going up to people I didn't really know and asking them these questions. But I asked Mr. Murphy, and he said, like what his rapper name would be, and he said Diamond Jim, and that just made the first edition, and you know probably my favorite edition of the Beacon, so much more special yeah. because everyone was talking about it, and he still is known as Diamond Jim, you know, almost two years later. So shout out to Mr. Murphy. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think Miss Lavery, she was my um, biology teacher this year. She helped me kind of realize how much I really liked biology. I knew that's what I wanted to major in, but I never realized there were so many options and so many things you can do with it. So she really helped further my interest in that. But the biggest thing she did was, she kind of helped me realize that stressing myself out was unnecessary and putting all this pressure on myself wasn't gonna get me where I wanted to be. And I remember we took our AP test recently and before that she made sure to tell us all we were more than a number, more than a score, more than however we do on that test because it's not gonna determine our future and we could always reach where we want to be, no matter how we did on that day. Uh, for me, it's got to be Miss Halsey, my business teacher. Although I'm not really interested in business, she, <laughs> did, <laughs> she, she did kind of give me an interest, and that's actually part of the plan that I do plan to start something in the future. That's not a point. Anyway, 
So <laughs> she helped me realize a lot of flaws within myself in the beginning of the year and even recently. And I was able to fix those and I'm currently working on them. And without her, to be honest, it would have been hard going into college with those issues. But she did help me out and I appreciate her and everything she's done for me. Thank you all so much for coming to the sh to our show. It has been a pleasure having you. And stay sharp, Lady Bees. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>